The Changing River This is how the Platte River looks today, but it wasn't always like this. Before the European settlers came, it looked different. For this segment, we're going to look at how the river is changing and the impact we humans have on the crane's habitat. First, let's talk about how the river used to be. Up to the 1850s, the Platte was a classic braided river. Over the course of its 310-mile length, it was usually an inch to six feet deep and one to three miles wide. It had wet meadows that attracted all manner of wildlife and wide sandbars free of shrubs and vegetation for the cranes. So what kept the river this way? Water and fire. Water and fire. In the spring, the water from the melting snow in the Rocky Mountains would rush down into the river, picking up sand and gravel and ice. This churning water would scour off the vegetation from the sandbars and leave the channels open and clear. The Platte River Basin's high water table, along with water seeping out, helped maintain the wet meadows. Fire also helped clear off shrubs from the river's edge. Fires were actually a common occurrence, usually started by lightning. With little or no trees or other places to hide, predators were easy for cranes to spot. That's the way the river looked 150 years ago, wide with plenty of flow and no shrubs or trees on the sides or the sandbars. Today it looks quite different. The Crane's Shrinking Habitat Once over 200 miles of the Platte River were suitable for cranes. Now the cranes are mostly confined to a 60-mile stretch between Grand Island and Kearney. Less than 10% of the cranes are seen west of Kearney today. That's a lot of space to lose. A once wide treeless river has become a narrow wooded stream, now unsuitable for the Sandhill Crane's habitat. Why has this happened? It's because of the demand for water and land usage that has come up in the last 150 years. <music> land usage. Nebraska is one of the United States' leading agricultural states and corn is the main cash crop. Approximately 25% of the state's jobs come from agricultural or farm jobs. A lot of those farms are located along the Platte River. In fact, over 75% of the wet meadows and grassland that used to be around the river have now been converted to cropland. This is both good and bad for the cranes. On one hand, losing wet meadows severely limits areas to find food like snails and insects. On the other hand, because of the corn left in the field by mechanical corn pickers, cranes now get 80% of their food from this waste corn left after the harvest. Water usage. Of course, when all the farms popped up along the river, they needed water to irrigate their fields so farmers dug ditches to drain the water and others built canals to carry water to farms further away from the river. All this demand for water slowed the river to a trickle in some spots. The first dam was built in 1909 in Casper, Wyoming to capture the water and use it for irrigation and hydroelectric power. Since then, seven more dams have been built along the North Platte River. But that's not all. Urban development. The Platte and the groundwater associated with the river also provides drinking water to more than half of Nebraska's people. Major population centers including Omaha, Fremont, Lincoln, Columbus, Grand Island, Kearney, Lexington, and North Platte depend on the river system as they expand and develop. Of course, large urban areas so close to the river are not good for cranes. 
Human activity near roosting sites can disturb the cranes so much that they will abandon the roosting site. Cranes normally will not roost close to bridges, roads, or housing developments. Power lines are especially hazardous to the birds. Cranes that run into power lines normally do not survive. What are we to do? Many people depend on the Platte River for their livelihood. Wildlife depends on it for their survival, too. But all these demands are putting an incredible strain on the river to the point that its own survival is in question. Part of the mission of Audubon's Rose Sanctuary is to protect and manage its property for crane habitat. It is not easy to do what nature used to do with spring flooding, to maintain wide channels and open sandbars like the cranes prefer, workers from several organizations use large machines called clearways and huge disks to remove woody vegetation on established islands. The machines essentially chew up everything in its path. Marginal cropland has been restored back into wetlands and grassland and maintained through prescribed burns. Some of the land has been enrolled in the Conservation Reserve Program and the Wetland Reserve Program to make the area more suitable for cranes. My question to you is, how can we all work together to keep the Platte River a vital part of what makes Nebraska unique? A major agricultural state with the greatest wildlife show on Earth.